So, uh, we have been talking about uh, surface generation, right. So, we started with the simplest example where a surface is obtained as a as an interpolant between four points, right. So, four corner points are given to you and you want to have a simplest definition of the surface. Uh, then we actually extended the problem definition instead of having just the four corner points given to you, we specified two boundary curves and we obtained a surface interpolating these two boundary curves. And then the problem was further extended, where instead of having two boundary curves, we had four boundary curves, right. So, in the case of two boundary curves, the type of surface we obtain is the ruled surface, right. The interpolant for four corner point was bilinear interpolant, extension of linear interpolant. So, again, ruled surface was a combination of linear interpolation and the definition of the boundary curves which could be of any order right and then when we had four boundary curves given passing <coughs> through the four corner points then what we constructed was the Kuhn's patch right which is obtained as summation of ruled surfaces but we had to subtract the bilinear interpolation, right. So, today we will look at some of the surfaces which are more like extensions of the curves. For instance, we have studied Bezier curves, B splines and so on and so forth. So, how do we generate surfaces extending the those ideas which we used for curves, right. So, so, if we look at again uh, these parametric surfaces as nothing but the parametric functions defined for x, y and z using the parameters u and v which is defined in a in a domain which could be rectilinear domain right. So, given the parameter value u and v where is the corresponding point on the surface that is the idea of defining parametric surfaces, right. So, now uh, for Bezier surfaces, the problem which gets imposed is the following. Just the way we had in Bezier curves, control po points given to you and you were required to construct the curve corresponding to or associated to those control points. So, here also we have control points given to us in the manner B 0 0, B 0 1 to B 3 3, right. So, the control points may look like something like this, right. So, it is a basically a lattice or a grid of control points, right. And this is the parametric domain we have for U and B, right. So, we basically have the uh, control points uh, index changing for u, let us say 0, then to 1, then to 2 and then to 3 and similarly the corresponding index for v. Right. So, we are basically extending the problem in a additional dimension, right. Just the way we had curves, now we have an additional parameter v right. So, just to uh, recapitulate what Bezier curve looked like given the definition of the control points such as B 0, B 1, B 2, B 3 right. So, this is the Bezier curve which is constructed using these Bernstein polynomials right which are defined in the parameter 
So, what we observe here is that the curve which is generated passes through the two end points and captures the shape according to the definition of the control points. Right. So, we would like to do a similar type of a construction for surfaces. Right. So, that is just to, to uh, give you some sort of a background for Bezier curve. Now, uh, if we go back and look <coughs> the construction, the alternate construction of Bezier curve which was to use the de Kastler algorithm. Right. So, what was de Kastler algorithm? It was basically successive <coughs> application of linear interpolation. Right. So, there uh, let us say if I consider example where we specify the Bezier points as B 0, B 1, B 2, then what we do is we for a given value of parameter t, we perform a linear interpolation in the span of the control polygon. So, first we apply the linear interpolation for the span B 0 and B 1 and obtain a point B 1 0. Similarly, we ap apply the linear interpolation in the span B 1 and B 2 and obtain the point B 1 1 right. And then again we perform another linear interpolation for the same parameter value t between B 1 0 and B 1 1 and obtain the point B 2 0 which is a point on the curve right. So, this was de Kastler algorithm. Fine. Now, having seen this construction, right, do you suggest a method which could possibly be used for constructing Bayesian surfaces? is a an, in the in the range from 0 to 1 right. So, for any value of t I perform this and that gives me the point on the curve right. So, what is it that we are trying to achieve is through successive application of linear interpolation I obtain a point on the curve right. So, the basic operation which is required for the purpose of construction is the linear interpolation right. Now, uh, the question is can some of the notion here be extended to do the construction of surfaces. So, what are we what are we trying to do basically trying to use the simplest primitive of constructing a curve which is linear interpolation. What is the simplest primitive of constructing a surface bilinear. bilinear interpolation. So, now the idea is can we use bilinear interpolation in a similar way the way we are using linear interpolation for constructing curves to generate surfaces. Okay. So, in fact we can so, as Bezier curve is constructed using su successive linear interpolation, Bezier surface can be constructed using successive bilinear interpolation. Okay. So, just to uh, again revisit bilinear interpolation which we have studied earlier. So, bilinear interpolation is as I had said is actually a simplest form of a surface which is obtained interpolating the four corner points here right and the way we do the <coughs> construction of a point on the surface is basically a two pass linear interpolation. So, once we run a linear interpolation in V to obtain let us say a point here right similarly a point here on this 
leg of the polygon right and then we perform another interpolation in u linear interpolation and we obtain the point here and that is a point on the surface right so that's how we perform bilinear interpolation okay now now what we would like to do is we would like to use this concept bilinear interpolation successive bilinear interpolation to generate bezier surfaces right so the algorithm is a straightforward extension of the de castro algorithm using linear interpolation in the case of curves right so let's see what are we trying to say here so again if if we define let's say the control points for the surface as these points right so these are nothing but the three dimensional control points right and this is our parameter domain u v so for a given value of u v we would like to locate or generate a point on the surface right so what do we do we do we, we actually apply bilinear interpolation in in the combination of four points which get generated in this control net right the lattice of the control points right so for instance this point is a consequence of bilinear interpolation of the four corner points this one this one this one and this one which are listed here b00 b01 b10 and b11 so this is the input this these are the input just the way you had control points for the curves right if i had to just construct a curve so i would have taken this point this point this point and this point to construct a curve for these four control points but i had to control points of b00 b3 b4 no so these are just the the last so i am considering let's say bicubic case cubic in this cubic in that so cubic in u and cubic in v okay so this is my fourth control point for u right v is equal to 0 right so just from let's say one dimensional grid of control points now i am defining a two dimensional grid of control points right so that is why these indices are used okay so what have i have i uh, constructed here is a point located here as b11 00 which is the point constructed using bilinear interpolation of these four points right four corner points defined as this now i can repeat this process for the rest of these points four corner points right which would mean i get these points right so this this point is obtained from these four points this point is obtained from these four points right and so on. so all i am doing is taking the four corner points which are obtained from the grid of these control points right and obtain the point corresponding to the bilinear interpolation right so this is one level of 
bilinear interpolation right now i do the same thing just the way i had done in the case of curve i apply this bilinear interpolation repetitively which is that i obtain this point here as a bilinear interpolation of these four points now which were constructed in the earlier step right so i am basically doing a bilinear inter interpolation of the points like d1 100 d1 101 d1 110 and d1 11 right which are these four points Right, and the corresponding point I get, I call that as B two two zero zero. So this superscript here is indicating me the the level, right, or the iteration, if you want to call. It. Right. So so just in a similar manner, I can locate the point here. and i can locate the point here and here right and now i can again apply once a bilinear interpolation corresponding to these as four corner points right which is getting the point b3300 as a bilinear interpolation of point b2200 b2201 b2210 and b2211 right so this is a point on the surface right so it is exactly the same way as we had done in the case of curves here we use the primitive as bilinear interpolation right so uh, is there any problem in this construction see i have a notion of doing this construction of bezier surfaces through the grid of control points right and i have used here the grid to be a square grid meaning i have four points in u four points in v right i have total 16 points which gives me the surface the or let's say the degree of the surface to be the same in u and same in v right so i could apply this de castillo algorithm in a direct way what if i have so once again uh, as in the case of curves the degree of the surface which you generate is directly related to the control points you specify the number of control points you specify right so here if i specify four in this direction and four in that direction so i have the degree to be 3 in both u and v right now the question is can i have these two degree to be different and again apply de castillo algorithm say if i take the example okay this before that right if i take the example here what do i have i have 1 2 3 control points in u direction right and 1 2 3 4 in v direction 
Now, if I apply my de Castro algorithm, I can apply for this these four points to get this point. Similarly, for these four points get this point. Similarly, for these four points get this point, right, and so on. So I can locate one, two, three, four, five, six points here, right. And again, I can apply the Castle algorithm at this level to get this point, right, using these four corner points, and I can get this point using these four as corner points. Now, I am left with two points. So, I cannot apply my, I cannot directly apply de Castle algorithm beyond this level. Right. So, the way you can handle is that now you will have to do a univariate de Castle algorithm. So, you cannot just repeat the de Castle algorithm at this level, right. So, there is a sort of a special case which gets generated. So, you can apply the de Castle algorithm up to the let us say minimum of the levels or the degrees defined in u and v and then beyond that you take that as an univariate case, right. So, the algorithm as far as the algorithm is concerned you can mathematically see just the way it was in the case of curves, right. So, where <coughs> you can uh, sort of represent this as just a simple bilinear interpolation using the levels r, right. So, that gives you a recursive definition or formulation of de Castro algorithm. So, where r could change from 1 to n and these indices could change from 0 to n minus r, right. So, when r becomes n that is where you terminate, right. Okay. So, now looking at well this is not a really a limitation, but this has some awkwardness in applying the de Castle algorithm when we have the degree in u and degree in v not to be the same, right. So, now the question is that can we devise some way or let us say some better way of defining these surfaces where it is considering these degrees in u and degrees in v in a very natural way. So, you do not have to do anything extra or as special as a special case, right. So, in fact, what you can think a Bezier surface can be thought of as being a surface swept out by a moving and deforming curve. So, here again we want to use the, the method as for curves. Right. So, the idea here is that uh, I can think a surface being generated where a curve is being swept right by moving and it is also deforming right. So, the swept surface or the envelope which I get is the Bezier surface, right. So, so what do we mean by this? So, again uh, I can define this curve which I am using for getting the swept surface. Let us say I define this curve in U right. So, I can sort of do this construction in a univariate way 
in just in u right, where I have these Bernstein polynomials defined and these are the associated control points B i s. This is just a simple Bezier curve. Right. Now, the corresponding control points I have here, these B i s, I can consider they they as traversing a Bezier curve. Right. See, I am constructing a Bezier curve here using these as the control points B i s. Now, imagine that these B i s actually traverses or moves along a Bezier curve. which is to say that B i's are nothing but again some sort of a Bezier curve defined through the parameter V right, the, in the other dimension, where I could use the Bezier control points as B i j's right, and the corresponding Bernstein polynomials. Right. So, this is what I would mean when I use a Bezier curve traversing along another curve, right. Bezier, the, the control points of the Bezier curves are now traversing along another curve, right. So, that is where I get the, the movement as well as the deformation of the curve, right. So, now, if I just combine these two, see, I have this as the univariate case to define the Bezier curve in U and the control points here are themselves lying on a Bezier curve defined through the control points defined for V right in the orthogonal direction for, for the parameter. So, now if I just substitute what I have obtained B i's and combine it, I get this right. So, that is nothing but my Bezier surface. Right, which combines the definition of these Bezier curves, right, a curve which is being swept and the control points of this curve move along another Bezier curve which is defined by another set of control points, right. So, geometrically if you want to see this is what is happening. What do we have? Let us say I have this to be the direction u, this to be the direction v. So, I have the degree here for u is 2 and the degree here for v is 3, right. Then this curve is actually moving when in this direction. So, the control points with respect to these curves are actually lying on another Bezier curve which is constructed using these as the control points, right. So, this particular curve is another Bezier curve generated using these Bezier points, right. So, that is what I mean by movement of the Bezier curves such as the control points of these Bezier curves move along another Bezier curve. You see it right. So, this particular control point when you see in an intermediate curve is actually lying on a Bezier curve 
obtained by these four points right so envelope which gets constructed using this is nothing but the bezier surface so it's a very natural way of combining univariate cases which are nothing but construction of bezier curves right okay so what do we have as the control lattice for the surface are nothing but these right so this these all points here 12 points i have they are nothing but the control net or control lattice of the bezier surface and once again it is very easy to establish that this representation or this way of constructing bezier surfaces is equivalent to de castle's constructions just the way we had done in the case of curve Okay, so now uh, if you want to see in a matrix form, so this is the way we can have the combinations when when we combine the the univariate cases. So again, I can rewrite this expression in a matrix form, where I can decouple the basis of the bernstein polynomials in this case in u and in v right and this is nothing but the control points right matrix for control points right and since this control points are nothing but 3d vectors right so this sort of forms as the tensor product because these are sort of matrix of matrix where in this case this matrix is a vector so this is nothing but a but a vector right so that is why we call these as tensor products so you are using these tensors right okay so now we can look at uh, some properties of these bezier surfaces just the way we have the properties is uh, in the case of bezier curves many of those properties can straight away be extended in the case of bezier surfaces so for example these are a fine invariant so what do we mean by a fine invariance that if i apply a fine transformation to the control points right so it will be equivalent if i had applied the fine transformation to the surface itself right similarly they also exhibit the convex hull property so the surface which is generated resides in the convex hull of the control points right and we also observe that the surface interpolates the four four corner bezier points right also the boundary curves which we have are nothing but the bezier curves obtained by the respective boundary control points right so i guess if you so what do we mean here that this bezier curve is nothing but obtained by these three control points this bezier curve is nothing but obtained by these four 
Bezier points, right? So the boundary curves are nothing but the Bezier curves which you would have obtained by using the boundary control points of the Bezier net. Right. So, so, in other words, the surface which get generated interpolates these boundary curves. Right. So, the other uh, property which is a very desirable feature of these basic surfaces is that if I change a position of the control point then the surface change accordingly just as we observe in the case of curves. So, these surfaces are not interpolating surfaces except that they have boundary curve and end, end point interpolation right, but they capture the shape which is provided through the control points of the Bezier net. So, these are the control handles for the shape of the surface. Now, uh, the next question which is that we had observed degree elevation in the case of curves, you remember. So, how was it done? getting extra control points. So, what did we basically mean by degree elevation is that for the same curve you want to elevate the degree and since in the case of Bezier curves the degree of the curve is related to the number of control points right. So, elevating the degree by 1 requires you to add an additional control point. Right, that is what was degree elevation in Bezier curves. Now, the question comes here that can we have the same thing for Bezier surfaces, which could be desirable feature particularly let us say if I as a pre processing to the direct application of de Castro algorithm, I may actually elevate the degree in one direction before I apply the gas term. Hmm? Basically, just increase the control point of the boundary. Just the boundary. The boundary curve remains same of the surface. Is it enough just for the boundary? See, the what is the process of generation? It is actually that the curve moves such that the control point for that curve moves along a Bezier curve. Right. So, it would not be adequate just for the boundary curves. Okay. So, if I take the example let us say where for the surface defined through these control points has got degree in u as 2 and degree in v as 3. Right. Then let us say if I want to elevate the degree in u to 3, right. So, clearly just by counting the number of control points, how many control points should I have? If I, if I have to define a surface which is bicubic means cubic in u, cubic in v, 60, right. So, 16 points and here I have 12. So, it requires 4 additional points. Correct. So, see what we can do is we can actually make use of the information from the univariate cases as Bezier curves. 
right. If I were to increase the degree of the curve here, right, I would have added points such as such that there is the points which are generated have linear combination of these two points and here another point which has got a linear combination of these two points right? that would have located two points here instead of one point there. Right? Similarly, I could do this here for this set of three points, similarly for this and similarly for that and that takes care. Right. So, this is what I mean. So, I have these yellow points as the points which are added through degree elevation instead of these points now. So, I would use these yellow points. So, now I have both in u and bo and v for each as control points. So, the parameter for example, u which selects this new point on each of these lines right. is got to be same for all of them. Uh, we are defining a point on a line by some parameter. Correct. And if it is got to be same for all of these lines. Right. So, this, this particular combination which I am trying to locate would use a parameter in u right so similar ratios are going to are going to be used here okay so similar ratios will be used for this and this and the other points what about the other side of same thing see what i'm doing is if you had to just do degree elevation of the bezier curve right I would have obtained the necessary ratios or the linear combination which I require right just by comparing that the resulting curve is the same as the previous curve right that you, you remember that what we had done and compare the coefficients of the two because they are basically the same thing. So, same thing I will do here it does not change anything. Right. So, that is the nice thing about looking at these surfaces as just a combination of the univariate cases. Right. So, same thing if I were to de uh, elevate the degree in V, I would have done for these control points. Okay. Uh, next thing is how do we get the derivatives? So, derivatives let us say now I am talking about partial derivatives in u and partial derivative in v, right, because I have these biparametric functions. So, if I have to take the partial derivative in u, then all I can do is take this inside, so that it is only associated to the blending functions in u, right? And then I can perform the derivative of these Bernstein polynomials, right? Which would give me from b m i to b m minus 1 i. right? So, this if you recall is nothing but actually taking a derivative of Bezier curves exactly the same thing. right? So, this is what I have done I have just basically decoupled these u's and v's and I obtain the derivative here and this operator the delta 1 0 operator just gives me the necessary first difference of points which I require. Right. So, delta 1 0 is nothing but b i plus 1 j minus 
भी आई जे राइट एंड अगेन इफ यू लुक एट दिस एंड इफ आई वर टू परफॉर्म ए पार्शियल डेरिवेटिव इन बी इज द सेम थिंग इंस्टेड ऑफ नाउ टेकिंग फॉर यू आई विल जस्ट टेक दिस फॉर वी राइट एंड दिस डेल्टा ऑपरेटर एज जीरो वन गिवस मी द फर्स्ट डिफरेंस ऑफ द पॉइंट बी आई जे प्लस वन एंड बी आई जे फाइन right so and in fact when you look at the expression here this is again just as in the case of bezier curves the derivatives were bezier curves themselves right with less degree right similarly the derivatives of a surface bezier surface is another surface where we use the control points as the first difference right so these are vectors they are not point values but vector values so i can see that the cross boundary derivatives are again defined through the first span of the control lattice or the control grid in the respective directions so for instance in this direction the derivatives are basically defined through the first difference obtained from this point and this point at the boundary right so if you remember in the case of curves the first derivative at the first point and the last point were defined through the respective spans of the control points in the polygon so which is to say that the tangent vectors of the curve in direction could be obtained by the spans of the bezier polygon so similarly the boundary derivatives are indicated by the respective spans which are there in the control grid of points right so this is essential when we are talking about compositing or joining two bezier surfaces okay so uh so we stop here and i give you the question which i would ask you to answer in a piece of paper so right now right now that's okay it will take 5 minutes 2 minutes actually so the question which i'm going to pose is that so the question is uh, given partial derivatives right given partial derivatives like the way we have seen the del of del u and del of del v right find the normal at the point on the surface so have you understood the question see uh, these these are the derivatives we have
right this is the first derivative partial derivative in u and this is the first derivative partial derivative in v right so this i compute i can compute at any point of the surface depending on what u and v i supply now the question which i am asking is that how do you find normal have you understood the question or are they indicative for the information of normal which i would be interested in computing fine so take this as a homework 